It's Speaking with Gravity, and I am Curvin. I'm D, And I'm Ty. And we're the host for a podcast that speaks on mental health in the, our community and how everything affects everything. With every episode, the goal is to have a conversation that will make you think, make you feel, make you do what is best for you. I'm a therapist, but this isn't therapy. It's a podcast. And we have a disclaimer. While we serve as mental health professionals, the information and content being discussed during our podcast is not intended to be utilized or substituted as therapy. The purpose of this broadcasting is to share our personal perspectives through open dialogue about various content based on our personal, educational, and professional experience. All right, y'all know what it is. It's Twitter discussion time, and I got a phone call coming in that's messing me up because I had my stuff on my phone right here, but it is what it is. Twitter discussions where we talk about uh, what we see online and, and just get some dialogue about it. And uh, we have a, a, a group text, um, me, Ty, and D, and this was sent in to our group text. I thought it was kind of dope, um, and I wanted to get everybody's comment on it. So um, Julian Thomas, shout out to Julian Thomas, whoever he is, take it to the altar, then sit on your therapist's couch. Take it to the altar, then go to your financial planner. Take it to the altar, then fill out that application. Take it to the altar, then meal prep properly. Take it to the altar, then delete his or her contact. Take it to the altar, then take the first step. The altar produces inward transformation. Your actions will produce outward application. You need both to win. Take it to God first, but make sure you do your part. Thompson Theories. I think that was kind of dope. Well, what, what y'all think about that? Uh, I'm going to give our guest here, Mr. Gray, uh, his first opportunity to talk, and then we'll, we'll introduce him and, and tell who, who he is and what he's about. Mm-hmm. When you see that, what do you think? Well, when you hear that, what do you think? Take it to the altar. Well, I, I, I know Pastor Thompson. so. Oh, um, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, but I, I agree with his assessment. Um, for our Christian community, of course, prayer is our first uh, line of defense in any situation. And so when you're making major decisions in life, um, I believe you ought to seek God. But I believe there's two sides to, uh, to every human being. There's the spirit side, there's the flesh side. And so, of course, the spirit of God deals with our spirit. But then those counselors and those uh, therapists deal with our flesh and helps us bring the two together. Okay. Um, did y'all want to come in on that? I think uh, Thompson put it out there kind of. Self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so we have a guest today, and it is Mr. Charvis Gray. Um, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. He's he's the pastor of, I think, is Mount, Mar- Mount Moriah Baptist Church. Yes. And um, just give us a little bit about uh, who you are, what you do, what you're about. All right. Um, my name is Charvis Gray. I pastor uh, Mount Moriah Baptist Church in Anderson, South Carolina, specifically the big city of Star. Um, okay. Been there uh, four years now. Um, been in ministry right about 15 years. Uh, in addition to pastoring, I also am a licensed mortician um, for Beasley Funeral Home in Greenville, South Carolina. Been doing that for 20 years now. So uh, really ministry on both sides of, both sides of, of my careers. Um, I enjoy um, both of my vocations. I'm working with people um, during their grieving times uh, and also being able to share the word of God with people uh, for life. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get into our topic starting with our QD of the hour. So the QD, which stands for Quotable Data of the Hour, (coughs) is just another version of our fun facts and also information for you to be able to give to your family, friends, colleagues, coworkers, and church members. According to the Health and Human Services Office of Men, I'm excuse me. According to the Human (laughs) Health Services Office of Minority Health, African Americans are 20% more likely to experience serious mental health problems than the general population. Yet, African Americans are less likely to initiate treatment and more likely to end treatment prematurely. Additionally, African Americans utilize mental health services at about one half the rate of Caucasian Americans. And uh, Dee, you're gonna give us our intro into the episode. Y'all should be figuring it out right about now. All right. 
right? So literature suggests that African Americans are more likely to rely on their faith as a coping mechanism for dealing with depression and anxiety than they are to utilize mental health professionals. One study found that 90.4% of African Americans reported use of religious coping in dealing with mental health issues. In other words, many African Americans, um, rather than seeking support in form of mental health professionals, go to church. Today we will discuss the role of the church in improving or worsening mental health in the African American community. Um, and this uh, summary discussion was an introduction from an article written by Victor Armstrong for American Foundation for Suicide, suicide Prevention. So if y'all don't know by now, um, the episode is Church and Mental Health. Um, and I, I see a lot of dialogue on um, social media, uh, sometimes when I'm talking to my friends, even when, when I'm talking to people in general and they know I'm a therapist, you know, the thought is, is... Uh, how you do that? You know, or you know, you're a Christian and you're a therapist. To me, I don't, I don't see the, the, the I don't see how they go against each other. But some people do, um, and I guess it's because of how it's been viewed uh, in the past. Uh, for me, uh, I remember being an undergrad and us talking about uh, anxiety and having a panic attack. I knew a panic attack as. Oh, this person got bad or anxiety as yes. this person got bad nerves. And if they had a panic attack, it was they had a um a nervous breakdown. You know, I don't I don't know what we what we have with these nerves thing, but that's that's how it was it, it, it was given to me up until uh, I was able to actually put a word on it. So um with that being said, talking about church and mental health with you. We're gonna go back to when you were. Were you studying to be a minister, or how did how did that come about for you? We'll go there first. So originally, when I started uh, my undergraduate degree, I, I actually started my degree um, studying psychology. Really? Okay. And um, because my intention was to be a psychologist, and so, uh, but as I was progressing through school, um, I answered my call into ministry. And so I shifted my, de my degree from uh, a Bachelor's of Psychology to a Bachelor's of Christian Ministries. Um, but uh, ironically, there were a lot of psychology classes that were the undercurrent to that degree as well. So it still allowed me to um, stay in that, in that lane of study, uh, but overall um, shifted to religious um, Christian Ministries f to give me the uh, the background I needed to serve in the capacity of pastoring. So you telling me if uh, a person goes to school for Christian studies, they got psychology classes? That's yes. a part of their curriculum? Absolutely. All right. So well, do you feel like it's a disconnect in the church I from do. psychology, mental health, and just spirituality? There, I do. There is a disconnect because um, there's a portion of Scripture, I think the Apostle Paul said, um, be anxious for nothing, um, but in all things with prayer and supplication, make your request be made known unto God. And so I believe specifically in the African-American community, uh, we, we, we approach um, our mind and our spirit from the uh, perspective of if I'm going to pray about it, I shouldn't worry about it. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to worry about it, I shouldn't pray about it. And so we keep the two separate because if I am a Christian, so to speak, um, and I'm dealing with whatever the issue is, I should take it to the Lord in prayer, leave it there, and let God handle it and God fix it. And while he can and he will, we often say that when you pray, you should, when you finish praying, leave your issues there. But we all know that it's not that simple. Um, if it, it, and depending on what the issue or circumstance is, once you say amen, um, your mind doesn't shift and turn off to that situation because you still got to go back into that marriage or back into that job or back to the doctor or whatever the situation is. You still got to constantly uh, figure out how to balance uh, head and heart. And so, uh, and it's very difficult to uh, balance the two. I believe that um, church gives us an uh, emotional release for whatever we're dealing with, especially if we're in a high-spirited church situation. I'm able to 
uh, allow myself to be caught up in my praise and my worship and and uh, and attesting that God can, God will, and that set that that satisfies me in that space. When the benediction is given, and if I'm in an abusive relationship, when I leave the church, I got to go back to that home. If I've been given a bad diagnosis, when I leave the church on Sunday, I've got to meet with my doctor on Monday. And so while I was able to release it Sunday morning, I have to deal with the reality of, the reality of it the rest of the week. You better, you better preach this thing this week. Uh, <laughs> and so I believe that many times, especially in, 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 in church of, the church of yesterday, if you will, um, our ancestors uh, were, were, were taught to just pray about it, just pray about it, just pray about it, don't worry about it, just pray about it. And they therefore passed that down to us. Don't, well, if you prayed about it, let it go. Well, it's not that simple um, because our minds are different. The, the, um, I'm, I'm 41, and so the way I process things at 41 was quite different from the way my parents processed things when they were 41 because life was different. Um, the situations were different. The way we approached church was different. Um, my my uh, church service is more of a high-spirited, more of an engaging type of worship as opposed just to the traditional call and response. Mm -hmm. um, I try to uh, preach messages that are probing but the hermeneutic of all of my sermons is hope, so that no matter what you're going through, what you're dealing with, at the end of service, I want you to leave service knowing that in spite of what I'm dealing with, I have hope that I'm gonna get through it. Hope that God's gonna bring me out, and hope that I have the uh, essential tools to do what I need to do to push through it. Doesn't mean it's gonna alleviate it altogether, but I can deal with it and move through it. Um, you said a word well that said. I don't even know. Yeah, yes. it was well said. You also said a word I did not know the definition. Hermeneutic. Her hermeneutic. What is so, that? So hermeneutic is um, in 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 uh, theology or religion. Hermeneutic is the basis of uh, what one's um, drive or top uh, drive or uh, topic is for their sermons. Okay. So. You know, you have some pastors whose their, their hermeneutic is faith. Some mm -hmm. some pastors whose hermeneutic is, you know, uh, prosperity. My hermeneutic is is hope. Okay. Um, you said uh, earlier that a lot of time you gave the scripture uh, "Be anxious for nothing." Uh, what was what was the rest of it? Be, be anxious, anxious for, for nothing, nothing, but in all things with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known. No and then you went on to explain um, the thought is. Uh, to take it to pray and then just leave it leave it there is the perception that if okay I pray about it and then I actually go to a therapist or start therapy that I'm worrying about it because I started therapy do we think that that's that's what that the way that you you gave that answer it made me think about that are people um connecting therapy to where well, I'm actually still worrying. Even though I prayed about it, I'm still worrying, and that's why I don't go into therapy. I think so. I, I do believe that uh, because people don't want to, um, uh, they, 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 they look at it as um, it being oxymoronic, two opposites. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm, uh. going to, if I'm going to pray, then that should be the end all. If I got to go to therapy, uh, then um, is is my are my prayers to God? Am I going to therapy because my prayers to God are not being answered? Am I going to therapy because I don't really believe, um, or am I going to therapy because yes, I've prayed about it, but I also realize that uh, there's some work I got to do too. Um, uh, it, it, I, I loved watching uh, Iyanla fix my life. Mm -hmm. And one of the things she always said was, you've got to do the work. And in, in any situation, we always want someone else to work for us. Mm -hmm. we, want, we want somebody else to figure it out. We want somebody else to, 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 to do the work for us. But you have to do your own work based upon your own situation. Because if you want change, you've got to be the change you want. 
And so there's always somebody, even in church, there's somebody watching you. So when you ask, well, you prayed and we, we, we did prayer circle and we, we, we pled the blood of Jesus over the situation, but now you're going to therapy. I'm going to therapy because I got some issues. I got some issues that, quite frankly, the Lord ain't spoke to. I got some issues that, that really are separate from church. Because if we tell the truth, we're one person in church and we're another person outside of church. Yeah, yeah. Right. Very rarely you get the same person on Sunday morning and on Monday, and on Monday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And so there is a, there is a separation that um, church culture has taught us if we reach outside the church, then we lack faith. Mm -hmm. So speaking of culture, how do, you, how do you have your culture so that they understand going to therapy is a part of the work or part of the extra step. How do ministers nowadays or um, church leaders, how do they get that across to, hey, we, we understand that therapy is okay. And I think uh, you say you know Jill Julian. Mm -hmm. He's a minister. Mm -hmm. I think that's good that he even put that out there from the beginning so that um, his, his church people would know, uh, audience or whatever, would know how he feel about it. But how do we collectively put put that together so that people can stop um, taking one against the other, so to speak? Well, I, I think, number one, it deals with, it, 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 it starts with the leader. Um, and while I don't speak for other preachers, I only speak for myself, I believe that um, pastors today, some of them, uh, well, I speak for myself, me, I'm not your average pastor. I, I, I don't I don't ascribe to what uh, I was taught in my church culture. Uh, my, my understanding is deeper um, in, in some regard. I'm a little bit more liberal than, 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 than some pastors. Um, and while I believe that uh, God's word gives us a model or gives us a framework, uh, there's more to it than that. Um, God gave us choice mm. and he gave us a mind. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. All right. Jesus was the ultimate. He was perfect. We are imperfect and we live in a, we live in an imperfect world and an imperfect society. And we are faced with, um, we are faced with things that, uh, quite frankly, uh, were not going on specifically in the days of Jesus. Now, yes, we know that, that he came and, and, and he took upon the sins of the world. Uh, he, he, he dealt with uh, stressful situations. Uh, but I believe that when it comes to church, when somebody is dealing with depression, which is what we don't want to talk about, not only in the black church, in the black community, period. Uh, but when, So when you talk about church of old well just pray about it and the law and the law will alleviate it no because if a person has really been through a trauma and they're really uh depressed and they're, they're really suicidal they need more than church um pastors have to be um um clear and conscious enough to if someone comes to you with a situation you've got to be conscious enough to hear the need and say, okay, listen, you might need to go and talk to somebody about your depression. Do y'all have training for that? To say, all right, to be able to, you know, I, I went a couple of, maybe a month or so ago to a mental mental health first aid, a mental health aid, I can't remember first what it's called. Um, I went to that, and it, ironically it was at a church, um, but I went to that, and it talks about, um, it really focused on suicide. Mm -hmm. um, and um, self-harm, mm -hmm. but it also talks a little bit more about other diagnoses like depression and anxiety. Um, and you, you had a, you kind of got to step up because your major started off in psychology, so mm -hmm. you took a lot of psychology classes, and you did say that there are additional psychology classes as part of your curriculum. But that being said, how are ministers, how do they know how to identify the symptoms? Do they have to go out there and get it themselves, or is that, you know? De depending on um, <clears throat> depending on what a 
what a pastor's or minister's degree is in, um, you, can, you, you can get a degree in pastoral care and counseling. And that degree usually is more geared to the counseling side of pastoral ministry. Um, um, most, most of your pastors today are getting their uh, Masters of Divinity, a Doctor of Divinity, which is more geared to focusing on, um, focusing on scripture and application of. But when you get those um, uh, degrees in Christian education, uh, pastoral counseling, pastoral care, uh, those degrees and pastors who have those degrees are mostly, most of those pastors uh, are, are, are usually bivocational pastors. Uh, they're usually, um, in addition to pastoring, they're chaplains at hospitals and nursing homes or, or things of that nature. So it kind of depends on, it really depends on um, the focus of that specific pastor um, and, and how how he wants to uh, uh, have his congregation set up. Is, 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 is his ministry about, is, does he have a holistic ministry where he deals with the mind, body, and spirit? Or does he have, is, 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 is his idea of ministry just to you know, preach the word and, and teach the word and let you figure it out yourself? So it has to, it kind of depends on, it kind of depends on that pastor and what his, what his overall focus is for the church, but it also depends on also it also depends on the people and who you are, who you're leading. Um, I'm serving in my second pulpit. I pastored my first church for about six years. I've been at Mount Moriah now for four years. Uh, both congregations were made up of um, older older people, um, um, and what I notice is. The mindset of that that congr that congregant is uh, when I come to church, I do I, I I take it to the Lord. I don't talk to nobody about my issues. I don't tell nobody my problems. So I suffer in silence. The only time my silence gets a voice is when it actually gets to a point and I can't handle it and I'm about to lose it. Uh, but our our modern generation. Um, we talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so because we have more conversations, it helps us figure out how we can help each other, I think. Yeah, you, you, you're making a lot of interesting points. Mm -hmm. You kind of take away my questions, too, because <laughs> you, you get in, you, you putting it out there. Um, but I also hear you, I hear you saying, um, what I'm hearing you say is it's a mindset. And it's not necessarily the pastor's mindset because that that changes with his education. You know what what uh, major he did. It changes with how many churches he's been, or how long he's been in the the field. Um, and so, with that being said, if you got a pastor that's um, for mental health, then it's on you. Mm -hmm. right? It's on the congregation or the people within the congregation. Should the church be the leader in destigmatizing mental health, and I say destigmatizing because the thought is that mental health is a stigma in our community, in the African American community. So, you know, with everything else, the church has always been that the first kind of go to. Or at least, if somebody want to get something to us, one of the avenues is to go through church. Should the church be the leader in destigmatizing mental health, and how can they do that? I think it should be. Um, I think because that is you want the church to be a leader in everything, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, in 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 black culture, the church always has been first. Um, before we had schools, we had church. Mm -hmm. Schools was in the church, and then after we you know got a little bit got, got ourselves together a little bit more, we built schools. But then the pastors were also the teachers. And so you went from the pastor being the teacher to the pastor being the principal to the pastor being a professor at the college. Um, in the civil rights movements, we couldn't go anywhere else, so we met at the church. Um, if you're into masonry and, and Masonic halls, Masonic halls are all attached to churches. Uh, so the church has been, the in, in our community, specifically the African-American community, it has been our core. 
Funerals are at the church. Weddings are at the church. Most of your life-changing events surround, are surrounded by the church. Um, so I do think that church should continue um, its legacy in leading um, us through the different um, uh, situations in life, i.e. Uh, mental health. The, the, the how to do that is the partnership between mental health professionals um, and churches. Mental health professionals being at churches allowing mental health professionals to come in and have educational seminars on what is mental health, why is it important, how to recognize uh, mental challenges, how to recognize anxiety, how to recognize depression, um, what a, how to recognize uh, uh, suicidal, suicidal issues. Um, we're dealing with a generation now of, uh, with our, a lot of our younger generations are dealing with self-identity issues. Uh, and churches don't know, um, they don't know how to deal with that. Um, and you want to, in many instances, we want to push those, those children away um, simply because we don't know how to talk to them. Mm. And you, sometimes you gotta take your, sometimes you have to, you have to take your, 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 your religion, if you will, out of the situation um, and, and just have a conversation. And even though church has been a huge part of our life, uh, conversation has not been a huge part of our life. Mm. I tell you what I want you to know. Mm. Sip yeah. that water tight because I wish I had more. Yeah, that's uh. You're speaking on a lot, uh, yes. you know, and it's it's a game changer, I think, um, because I I too believe I feel like it should be just a common conversation had in whatever congregation that you're you're sitting in, making it normal, like you said, destigmatizing it to where it's normal. After we've done discussed everything we typically discuss in church, all right transition to just mental health we have mental health awareness month you know are those being recognized in church settings when we attend big churches church conferences are we having that included on the program you know um and having these reoccurring conversations too because it's not just a one-time thing um, but it's it's very interesting to hear you and your leadership and your role in the church and then still talking about everyday situations that we experience and being comfortable enough to have these uncomfortable conversations. And to know it's okay to not only rely on your religious faith and belief, but to also address these real life issues that we're dealing with Monday through Saturday and coming back to church to continue to check in at the altar while holding yourself accountable on the work that you said we still need to do in addition to relying on our faith to assist us along this journey. Absolutely. So thank you. What, um, what can community professionals, what can we do as mental health professionals to help? What can we do? How can we approach um, uh, a church leader? How can we get uh, inside the church, so to speak, just to be able to help with the ministry from a mental health standpoint? I think it's all about contact. Um, you have your health departments always sending things to the church about, you know, um, in this day and time about, you know, diabetes and, 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 and read this to your congregation. We're having a, 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 a diabetes drive, you know, such and such day. Um, we would love uh, those persons who have, you know, di diabetical issues. Um, um, the the uh, um, AIDS awareness, all that information comes, come and get tested. Right now we're in the midst of the pandemic, so, you know, churches and, and, and are partnering with uh, other medical venues about getting people tested for COVID and, 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 and flu shots. So I think it's about getting the information out there um, um, getting the information to the church, um, excuse me, having someone um, uh, from the from the mental health field show up on a Sunday morning and 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 give uh, be uh, asked to give you know two minutes of listen we're having a mental health drive 
Uh, if you know somebody, if you think you're having some mental health challenges, here's our contact information. Contact us. Uh, we can put you in t contact with uh, this, the appropriate um, mental health persons to assess whatever your situation is. Um, in addition to that, um, I think that pastors, we got to probe our people. Um, we got to let, we've got to present to the people, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, it's, and, and once the, it starts with the head. So uh, once the, the pastors present, it's okay. The key is many pastors mm -hmm. are not going to say, exactly. you know, well, some days I'm just, I'm having, I'm not having good days. Right. That, that some, some days, you know, I can't go to sleep at night. Um, you, got, you got pastors who are um, insomniacs, but would dare not say that on Sunday morning. Um, you got pastors who, who themselves have been to counseling, but would never share with their congregation that they've been through counseling. How do you, the, the pastors, when they need counseling, uh, Hmm. You had said something earlier, and I was trying to figure out how to how to ask the question uh, about pastors. Who you go to when you need counseling? Um, do you go to a mentor, or do you go to therapy? And how do y'all find them? Do y'all find them just like everybody else, or do y'all have a EAP uh, <laughs> for the ministry? Um, people come to y'all conferences and talk with you, you guys. Mental health in in. Relation to church conferences is is is, is new. Um, it is it is slowly now being integrated into conferences, uh, especially um, coming out of or, or in the midst of this pandemic. Um, people being depressed and oppressed and overwhelmed, um, and so they're trying to integrate mental health now. Um, and it's still, I would say, in its infancy stages. Um, Many pastors, um, or let, let me speak for me. I've been to, I've been to therapy. I've been to counseling before. Um, and um, nobody knew. Um, and, but I also have talked about it in, 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 in preaching moments and in teaching moments to exp express to my congregation or whoever I'm preaching to that if you need to go sit on the couch and talk to somebody, go do it. If, because I think we have the stigma of if I got to go to counseling or therapy, I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. But no, it's not that you're crazy, it's that you are cognizant of I got some things going on inside that I need somebody to, and sometimes it's, it's, I said this I think Sunday before last in one of my sermons and I said that <clears throat> many times um, it's not that I just need somebody to talk to I just need somebody to be present I, I'm really not asking for your opinion or your thoughts yeah. I just need to share this with you and know that you're gonna sit in it with me for a moment and hold that safe space. that's it uh, creating that place of safety, and I think that in in the African American commu African American community, many instances, especially when it comes to our mental health, we don't feel safe, mm -hmm. and so I'll suffer in silence because I don't feel safe. That if if you knew I was going to counseling, you're gonna go tell her, exactly. she's gonna tell him, and then it's gonna be it's gonna be you know uh, a negative thing that well, he had to go get counseling or she had to get counseling. And the reality is, I just need to go talk to somebody. Or the comments, you ain't take it to the Lord in prayer? I did. I but did I still it. have work to do on my end. I did pray about it. And the Lord told me, go talk to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's an obligation that we as therapists have to fulfill as well in our practice is maintaining that safe space. Um, because oftentimes, I think even from a pulpit perspective, sometimes in Revelation, people assume that when you're ministering, you 
putting their business out and that everybody knows it because we know that about ourselves, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm an adulteress or I'm, you know, addicted to drugs, I know that I do it. So if you're preaching about it, I assume that you're directing that at me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so therefore, again, like you said, if I go and tell somebody else that my business is being exposed while I'm working through that process. And I think the misconception about therapy is too, is that there is an immediate response that's going to alleviate everything. Mm -hmm. People don't understand the process of ministry and the process of therapy because you get saved this day doesn't mean your life changes for forever. There's a work and action that is required just as it is in therapy. When you come and sit at that table and you you share with us what's going on. Now there's an, a process that we have to go Absolutely. through. There's something that you have to work through in order to get through that stage. And I think the expectation that healing is this beautiful journey is what people misconcept about therapy, just as they think that coming to God is just this beautiful journey. You don't have any more traumas. Everything is resolved. And I think if we can change the way we view and see that, we really can see how connected therapy and ministry is and spirituality and what it really can do for us because when you see people in their wholeness and you see them elevating you it, it ain't nothing that they got to talk about you just see that person and you know it doesn't mean they alleviate it from trauma but they have a way of which they respond and how they handle it and a lot of what we do is about response it's, it's really response. about how we respond to Absolutely. situation that's what the the regulation of it is and so as i'm listening to you i, I really am hardened by, I'm not, it's not hardened, but I'm really glad to know that there are ministers who are in your place and in your space, especially in this present day and time, who are saying, I'm here to hold you, but I'm also here to refer you to, to other Absolutely. supports, because I know that you, you're you going to need additional space. Absolutely. Uh, sorry. That's yeah. Absolutely. And it doesn't take away from your spirituality. No. At all. At, at, at all. all. And no, no way, shape, form, or fashion. And, you know, when you say that about um, therapy isn't just a beautiful um, journey, it's, it's ebbs and flows, ups and downs, it's not linear, it's not just going to happen uh, overnight. And it's, you're going to take uh, two steps forward, maybe one step back sometimes. Sometimes you're going to take two steps back and then three steps forward eventually. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and it just depends on the person. Anything else you want to give to us before we uh, get out of here about church and mental health? Um, just any, anything, anything you want to share uh, with us and t- kind of give uh, to the people in general? Um, I, I would just say that, you know, you, you don't know, have to necessarily marry the two in terms of um, have to be all church uh, and, and, and all mental health. Uh, they, can, they can work side by side um, in in, in this in this season in which we're living, uh, whether we want to admit it or not, all of us have things that we wrestle with. Mm. Uh, again, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, darkness, evil, and high places. So we, we, we're engulfed in spirits every day. When you go in the grocery store, you're surrounded by thousands of spirits. So, yeah, you got to be prayed up. But in the midst of being prayed up, covered, anointed, all of that, you have to be aware of what what you're wrestling with. And don't be afraid to go and have that conversation with somebody. Um, I I think the reason we we don't have conversation is like the ladies have said, we, we fear being ostracized if I have conversation. Well, then have conversation with somebody who is completely out of your circle. Go talk to... Go talk to a mental health provider. Um, you know, their, their, their regulations will, f- you know, forbid them from being able to share it. You, it may not be that you need questions answered. I just got things in my head that I need to talk to something. I just need to get out. I just need a listening ear. Um, and so the same way, the same way we tell the Lord all of our secrets, then you can, you can take those same secrets and share them with a mental health person who can then give you the, to, the, the tools you need health-wise, mentally, health, mentally speaking, whether it be, you know, um, something for anxiety or something for depression or, or, or whatever the situation is. It can just be breathing techniques. 
um, you know, how to how to usa for a moment, mm-hmm. you know. Right, exactly. um, but you know, the 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 we we can't we can't just lump it all uh, on the altar and say, well, I put it on the altar and it's gonna be okay. It is gonna be okay, but you got to you you, you gotta you, you you gotta do the steps. So it sounds like we need to be coming up to Mount Moriah Baptist Church one <laughs> Sunday and, and starting. Because I guess for me right now, like Dee was saying earlier, I feel obligated even more to meet my people where they are. And Absolutely. if the church is, which we all know, like you said, it's a core, it's a pillar of our, our culture and community. Despite what others may believe, despite your own religious affiliations, your own spiritual affiliations, whatever the case may be, this is a place where we all can come and it kind of be a safe space and an open door to have these dialogues and, and invitations to say it's really okay to not be okay. And you have trained professionals who look like you sitting right here who are willing to share, to help you along your journey, you know, and it's where you won't feel ostracized because in their defense, mental health has been ostracized by society. Right. So it Absolutely. is hard for us to accept the terminology mental health and incorporate it as a holistic part of who we are mind body spirit soul connection um so you just let me know when pastor right. <laughs> come on up yeah we'll be more than willing to help you out on that one all right that brings us to the end uh, of this this episode um, we appreciate you for coming thank you for having um, me definitely can yeah we, re- pastor can you tell us about when your service is how to bible study what are we or can we tune in on on television sure. from Bayside. Can we pop what, up on you? Yeah, what, can we yeah. roll up on you? Up so, there and start? What we're doing, <laughs> you absolutely can. So, of course, during the pandemic, uh, what we're doing right now is we're in service two Sundays and virtual two Sundays. So every second and fourth Sunday is in-person worship. Um, worship only lasts about 45 minutes. One song I preach, we go home. Um, wear, wear your mask, sign in, come on in, have a good time, go home. First and first and third Sundays is, is virtual. I'm still there at the church preaching from the, from the church, and a few people will 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 fall in those Sundays, and it's fine. Um, Bible study is strictly um, every Wednesday online um, at six o'clock, um, and uh, you can always find my, our our services on YouTube or on Facebook or on my page, Charvis uh, Gray Ministries. Um, and anytime I'm preaching anywhere. Um, outside the church, uh, my sermons are on uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Charvis Gray Ministries. Thank you, man. Thank you for sharing that with us, and thank you for reminding remind me to thank do you. that. Um, we appreciate uh, you coming out um, and being with us and talking with us. Uh, subscribe to Speaking with Gravity on Facebook and Instagram. We'll make it easy for you and put it into the show notes. And uh, one of the other things that I wanted, I, I'm so excited to add this to this one, put um tie on the spot right here was um i'm so excited that she has something that she's working on and we're just going to put it out here for the world to know it is called six one what six one event rentals um it's an event rental company that i started with my sister shout out to malika Bowie. six one we were both born on june 1st so that's where we originated the name from they definitely not six <laughs> one <laughs> Um, but right now we're starting out. We have one of the latest and newest trends, the 360 platform. You guys can check us out on Facebook, 61 Event Rentals. Um, you can check us out on Instagram, same name, as well as TikTok. We travel. Um, if you have any questions, just reach out to Curvin through Speaking with Gravity, and we can get connected. Thank you. Again, thank you to everyone that has liked, shared, or supported the movement to increase mental health awareness within our community. Also, thank you to uh, Mr. Winston for audio and visual productions. Thank you for taking the time to listen. You could be doing anything else, but you chose to be here with us, and we appreciate that. Until the next time, we are therapists, but this isn't therapy. It's a podcast.